Welcome back to Angling Buzz Ice presented by Fleet Farm. This episode's gonna be all about crappies. Oh yeah, look at that one. He just inhaled that pinhead minnow, oh my gosh. Now crappies are a favorite to chase across the ice belt and for good reason. They're fairly easy to catch, you can find them in big schools, and they make a great table fare. To kick off the show, I'll be joining John Crane from Clam Pro Tackle as we target late season crappies in shallow water. Look I mean, they're the just going crazy right now. I yeah, know it's... it. I know it. As fast as you can drop down. You know, all these, this late season weed bite for panfish, everything's in there. All the life in there, all the nutrients are going down the hole. There's bluegills, crappies, perch, there's minnows. We gotta get after them. Yeah, it should be fun. Punch a few more holes and let's see if we can't get some. All right. We're fishing a shallow, weedy bay mid-March. We got our spring coming on. It's not quite here yet. So we're out here fishing. I got about seven feet. We've been trying anywhere between five and eight feet in this weedy flat, picking apart the open areas. Now, a few things you want to think about when you are fishing this is, is make subtle changes, right? Small moves. Uh, a change from five feet to seven feet is going to make a huge difference, right? Small depressions in these flats, little, you know, pockets of weeds, anything like that is going to hold a few more fish because they're just kind of cruising along these big areas. So if you can find something that's a little different out here, it's going to pay off in the long run. What I like to do when I'm fishing shallow in the spring weeds is these inline or straight line reels. And, you know, you're just down there a couple reel lengths down there. I happen to have the, the Pinhead Pro on. I'm spooning today. And, you know, the reason I like these inline reels here is they totally eliminate the line twist. Hard to get them in the hole even. Oh yeah, just inhaled that Pinhead minnow. Beautiful fish, you know, these weed crappies in here. They're just mingling with all the minnows and crayfish and waiting for spring to come alive here. Let's let them go back and lay some eggs in the spring. This is my deep basin uh, crappie rod, you know, for fishing the, that 25 to 40 foot stuff with the spinning reel. Came up real aggressive. Uh, once we're going shallow in these weedy bays, we like our inline reels. Oh, just another nice sized crappie, we'll be getting all day. And uh, here's the big deal, a couple little pulls, and I'm right down to seven feet, back to where the school was. Fish have time to come up there and inspect it. If that lure is spinning around, the fish don't want to bite it at all. They want it perfectly controlled by your jigging motions. A little better one. Yeah, a lot better. I'm using three pound frost monofilament. You'll see it's yellow in color for a couple reasons. One, so I can see it going through my rod, my tips, your line gets wrapped around your rod. You can't see it. This yellow enables me uh, to see it, get my knots, get my tangles out. Uh, that's what we came here for, a big old crappie, huh? Yeah, he just hit that pinhead too. Just inhaled it. You know, on the business end here, this is the Pinhead Pro, made out of environmentally friendly zinc alloy. The zinc alloy allows it to be machined or tooled, and within that, the machining gives it, you know, the great features, the fins, the scales, the head, the, the dual flash red gills on the side. Very simple presentation. There he is. If they're not rocking on the, the Pinhead Pro, the spoon. I'm not sure how big he is, John. But oftentimes the one-two combo. They're fighting nice, so I can't complain. Are you battling again? Yeah. Is nice. uh, a tungsten and a soft plastic. What do we got here, huh? Little guy. But nice crappie. Yeah. Sweet. Take him. Gotta like that. Yeah, can't beat it. We're in shallow water. I've got a pink and white jig head on there. I can easily see the the jig head down there if I want to. Right now I've got a Mackie, you know, motor oil down there that's made to, you know, imitate insects and little bugs. Uh, but I could put a, a white colored plastic down there and glow in the dark, drop it down. You know, super easy to sight fish. You see the white disappear, you set the hook. There we go. That's what we're looking for. Stout. All kinds of shoulders. Yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> I looked down the hole and I'm like, man, I can't see my plastic. No way. Yeah, it just vanished, so. 
One advantage to using a little bigger hole, huh? Yep, yep. Wow. Awesome fish. Yes. Nice. The big thing here with the drop kick is to slide your knot. If you want that thing to hang horizontal, pull your knot back towards the hook. It'll hang perfectly horizontal then. You don't want it slid up here where it does not hang horizontal. So slide that knot back, drop your hook down, and get ready to get bit. This is nuts. This is nuts. <laughs> Woo -hoo. Gosh. I don't this even is... have time to get mine off my hook. <laughs> this is so awesome. This late ice bite is just, when you find them, it's crazy oh, how many fish are in one spot. The shallow weed bed, you know, Jake, it could be 150 yards wide by 500 yards long. I don't know, but it, it's holding a lot of fish. It is another nice one. Nice crappie. That a, wow. It's awesome. Sweet. It's been an epic day. You gotta like it, man. Feels like another nice one. You're hooked up again? Yeah. Need some help? I love it. I love right. the assist if I can get it. Oh, oh yeah, nice fish. Oh, buddy. Oh, yeah. That's how it goes. There right we go. There. That thing inhaled that drop. Yeah. Kick. They're moving in a little school right now. Absolutely. That's how you capitalize on it. Pop one and then get them right back down and get the next one. Oh, yeah. Look at that one. He just inhaled that pinhead minnow. Oh, my gosh. That's what we came here for. Look at that. Awesome fish. Boy, let me tell you, if you haven't given this late ice panfish bite a try, you got to do it. You can find tons of fish and tons of great action. Late ice and shallow water, it's so cool. Oh, that's an awesome fish, John. Yeah. Look at that. Look I mean, they're the just going crazy right now. Yeah, I know it. I know it. As fast as you can drop down. It is. It is. It's cool. Once you find, you know, these shallow flats. Absolutely. I mean, weeds, if you can find that too. I mean, there's just tons of fish. Gold mine. You know, it's like a big field of lily pads or milfoil. You just got to pick your way through them and work them over. Yep. It's been an awesome day. Let's get them back to spawn awesome. again this spring, huh? Good deal. Way to go, buddy. Love it. Thanks, Jake. Thank Appreciate you. Thank the day, you. man. It's great. Now, early and late in the season, crappies will bite all day. But during the heart of winter, they have a tendency to get fickle and finicky and only bite during low light hours or after dark. Next, I'll be joining Caleb Wistad in northern Wisconsin as he sheds some light on nighttime crappies. Got there you go. There we go. I got another one looking at me right now too. Nice. Feels like a decent fish. And a nice crappie. We're crappie fishing in northern Wisconsin, and we're doing something a little different. Check this out. Nice. Oh, Look geez. at that. There he is. Yeah. Nice. Looks like a good one. Yeah, it's not bad. Not bad. Oh, yeah. Nice fish. Nice crappie. Great fish. These are perfect eating fish. They have really nice fillets on them. Saw that rod tip load up. Nice crappie. Look at that awesome fish. So what we're doing here tonight, Jake just hooked up, but uh, we're basically targeting crappies in a deep basin. These fish are here all day long, but they're roaming around in a big school and there's no structure to hold these fish in one place so you can just fish them. You gotta chase them around all day. So what we're doing right now, is we're shining a light straight down the hole. And that is basically creating our own structure. And those fish are drawn straight to that light like a magnet. Jake just caught a dandy right here. It's a nice one. Awesome fish. Sorry to interrupt. That's all right. I kind of found out this technique by accident, really. Uh, we fish up on Lake Superior quite a bit. And we ended up shining a light down there and it just drew the smelt in like crazy. And I thought, well, I know crappie guys do this down south. I've heard of, you know, submersible lights bringing fish in. So I decided to just come out here in this basin one night and give it a try. And I dropped that light in. There was no fish around. And within minutes, I had fish under me and they stayed under me the whole entire time. 
Now it really is crazy to see how effective this light is. It's really holding these fish here on this basin where we really don't have any structure. Um, we're creating our own, but back in my home state of Minnesota, it's not legal. Here in Wisconsin, it is. So if you're gonna do this, make sure you check your local regs. Now for these nighttime crappies, I'm using a clam drop kick paired with a Jamie XL. And what's nice about these baits is they both glow and really attract fish in from a distance. So let's fire down there and see if we can't get a couple more. I just got a mess of fish down there. Look at those. There we go. Oh, that one feels nice. And I'm using this St. Croix Tundra rod tonight. It's got a real soft, extra fast tip on it for feeling these super light bites, but it's got a nice backbone for fighting these fish. Nice crappie. Nice one. Right in the roof of the mouth. They just come up and just nip that bait. And you always, almost always catch them right in the top of the mouth, right, right there. Oh yeah, here he comes. There we go. Nice. He chased it on the way down. That was crazy. There we go. Doubled, Doubled up. up. All right. Not bad. We'll take the double. We'll take it. Can I grab one of the bigger ones? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, he just barely had nipped it. Let's see if we go again. Got him. There we go. That's Feels like another favorite. nice one. I'll get the deucer out of the way. Yeah, feels like a nice fish. You know, I'm kind of wondering if we don't maybe have a tulby. We might. He's He was four feet over here but under my hole, so. See, oh, yeah, uh, you know what? I think I got a walleye. Really? Yep, I do, I got a walleye. <laughs> nice. nice, look at that. It's a nice little surprise. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Awesome. Be a good eater. Yep. Nice little eater. Yep, there he is. Oh yeah, nice one. Look at that awesome crappie. You know, if you haven't used the light nighttime crappie fishing, you gotta give it a shot if it's legal where you're gonna be fishing. I mean, it is a total game changer because we're creating structure where there's not and we're keeping fish under our hole the whole time. Now Caleb talked about one of the rods in the Tundra series, and it's a great stick for targeting crappies. But if you want to get really presentation specific, we're going to join Jeremy Smith who's got a couple great options by St. Croix. When it comes to choosing rods for crappie fishing through the ice, I feel there's one power in action that stands out. That is the light power, extra fast action. Now I've got four rods in front of me from St. Croix. I've got the Tundra series and the CCI series and three of these four are in that light extra fast. Let me explain to you why I have these three and I'll tell you which is my favorite of those three and then we'll jump into the fourth. The first is the 26 inch. So I have this one on board and I run this with the lightest line. I typically will run two pound line on this and I'm using this rod for the real finesse presentations when the fish are really finicky and I'm fishing really close to the hole. So the shortest rod, in my lineup, I've got set up with the lightest line on here, and it's the most finesse of the three. The 28 inch, this is hands down my favorite. This is my go-to crappie rod. I'm using this for most of my jigging plastics, jigging Euro larva, even small spoons, the length, the way I fish, and again, the power in action is perfect. I've got it spooled up with three pound line on here. This to me is just an absolutely dynamite rod. It's, it's incredibly versatile. So this would be my favorite of the three. And now I've got the 30 incher as well. It's got braided line on here, but I did put about 50 feet of fluorocarbon on here for fishing shallower water. I like having one setup that has braid, especially if I'm fishing in the house in deep water. That way, what I can do with this, I've got braid as my main line, but if I wanna throw on an extra long leader and fish shallow, I've got a lot more versatility with it than it just being strictly a braid rod and I'll fish deep water with this rod, but also I love this 30 incher because I feel that it doubles as a great dead stick. Look at the tip on that thing and look at how it, it just flexes like that. So a lot of dead sticks that I've seen might be a little more geared towards walleyes, but if you're fishing in a house, crappies are suckers for a little crappie minnow. 
dangling below. And I feel like this 30 inch light extra fast in the Tundra series is just a perfect dead stick rod, but it also is a really good versatile jigging rod as well. Now, most of this is small jigs, small spoons, but sometimes of course crappies like bigger stuff. So that's why I have this 32 inch medium light extra fast. This is St. Croix CCI, it's the Perch Seeker. I love this rod. It is an awesome big crappie rod. I'm using this rod for fishing rip and wraps, jig and wraps, slab wraps, a little bit bigger spoons. And this thing can handle a big walleye if it comes through. It's just a really awesome rod for fishing those baits that are a little too big for that light extra fast setup. So I would definitely recommend having one of these along because there are times when you'll catch more crappies fishing with bigger, more aggressive presentations than you will fishing with really light finesse stuff. So this is just an all around great stick to have having your rod tube as you're, as you're heading out on the ice. So that is the collection of rods and reels that I bring out on the ice every time I'm crappie fishing. Again, you don't need all of these, but hopefully this will guide you in your next rod purchase or when you're heading out on the ice to decide which is the best length, power, and action for your next crappie trip. Now that we talked about rods, we gotta talk about some baits too. The first is the Northland Tungsten Mayfly or Northland Tungsten Mini Smelt. Now these do a great job of mimicking forage and you don't have to use live bait with them. Now if you're going to be fishing for crappies deep, I definitely recommend getting a couple of VMC Bull Spoons or Northland Glass Buckshot Spoons. Now these baits are both heavy and they get down there quick. Now we all know bigger baits equals bigger fish. Here I've got the Rapala Slab Wrap and the Rapala Jigging Wrap that are both great options. Now Clam's got a wide variety of different jigs and plastics and they work great for crappies, but new this year is the Pinhead Pro. We're going to join Matt Johnson as he talks about this new crappie killer. Hey Matt Johnson here with Clam Outdoors. In order, chasing some panfish and in recent years a lot of anglers are really gravitating towards using spoons to catch bluegills and crappies. Now it's not a new concept. Anglers have been using spoons for panfish for a long time, but I'm going to touch on small micro spoons for big bluegills and big crappies without bait. You know, where I spend a lot of time fishing, I'm targeting a lot of pressured fish. I'm in the epicenter of ice fishing in the Twin Cities area of Minnesota, and these fish see all kinds of lures, and I tend to lean towards these spoons. There you go, took that pinhead. Not an absolute giant, but still, if you're looking for table fare, that's the one you want. And there it is, that pinhead pro, right to the snout. Again, no bait, chasing crappies, being effective, running and gunning, and you're catching fish. There we go. See you, buddy. And new for this year is the Pinhead Pro. And you're probably going to ask right away, what's the difference? Well, this, for starters, is a zinc alloy spoon. The Pinhead was all lead. Why zinc alloy? Zinc alloy, you can get more detail. You can see on that spoon, you can see the detail in that spoon. You can see gill plates. You can see scale patterns. You can see different gradients of color. It's also lighter than lead, so I can get away with a smaller offering. So how I fish this is pretty, pretty aggressive, to be honest. Uh, if you know me, you know that I always talk about go big or go home, right, and the way you fish. Yeah, so we've been moving all over the place chasing down these crappies. They've been pretty consistent in that 9 to 11 foot range. You move shallower, we're seeing smaller fish, and, and we've chased them, caught some, it's been a good morning. As the day moved along, these fish have seen a little bit of pressure, which these fish do, and we've slid out a little bit and got back on some of these crappies. And the beauty of fishing a spoon is I can actively chase these fish. I'm not worried about bait, I'm not worried about finessing that much, I'm getting after it, I'm fishing efficiently, and I'm watching the tip of my rod tip, and I'm setting hooks when I see bites. So exactly how do you fish these spoons, because that's a common question, you know? We're not tipping these, like I said, with a minnow head or a maggot or a live minnow. So I am employing R the action. I am dictating what this lure does. So I drop it down, I feather it down. I'm in about 10 feet of water, and I work it down to the area I want it to fish. And I'm feathering it down. A lot of anglers want to bomb everything they use down to these fish. Just like your tungsten, I'm dropping this spoon down to the target zone. And when I get to the zone, I'm fairly erratic. And what I'm doing with this is I'm not pounding it. A lot of anglers want to pound whatever offering they're doing. I'm swimming this. When this spoon kicks up, it wants to kick out to the side. So as I work this spoon, you can see I'm just hopping it. And then I'm adding some shakes. So my sequence is relatively scattered. I'm lifting it up, I'm working, letting it fall back down. I'm giving it some shakes and some hops. 
and I'm working that and I'm watching that rod tip and I'm always keeping it moving. A lot of anglers want to just stop. I've never seen a prey in the wild just stop when a big crappie comes up to it. So I'm working that pretty aggressively, working the water column and keeping that thing quivering when I get a fish to show up on my screen. And then I'm watching that rod tip and when you get a bite, I'll just simulate it here for you, that rod tip stops. And you know you have a fish because I'm not using anything with live bait. So when I'm working that rod tip and that tip just goes bump, hook sets are free, set the hook, bring it home. Oh, there he is. Crop up Rooney on the pinhead. Right there, took it right to the dome. We'll get that one unhooked. Show you this fish. There you go. He's fat. He must think it's Thanksgiving, but no, it's not. There you go, buddy. See you next time. Go ahead, another, another hole here, and you can see behind you, we're gonna make a move, and they're not big moves, so what we did this morning is we punched a series of holes. We didn't punch tight holes, meaning we moved 15, 20 yards. Then we go back through with the underwater camera, and we sample what fish are there, because not all fish are created equal on your flasher. So you wanna know what's there, we're targeting crappies, cover the area, fine tune with the camera, and then you turn it into Swiss cheese. We'll get back over here on another fish and see if we can get one to bite. Come on. Come on, come on, here he comes. There he is, right below the ice. Oh, big bluegill. Look at this one, nice bluegill. Crack that spoon there, oh, no bait. Another one down there, we'll see if we'll get another one to take this. Good thing I got a forceps, and they say they don't eat it without bait. Look at that spoon down that fish's throat. And it's not a giant bluegill, but still, they, look at that. I'm gonna set them right here, not to keep them, but just to not disrupt the school. It's halfway decent out. Let's see if I can get another one here to, to eat this. Get them mad here. Here comes another one. Come on. Got him, crushed it, pounded it. It's gonna be another nice crappie. Oh, he's not, oh, he's not happy. Oh, that one's even bigger. Here, buddy. Let's take a look at that. Right in that lip, pinhead, no bait, another slab. This is why the pinhead, and now the pinhead pro, has become the go-to for many anglers, including myself. This has become a part of my family. This is one of my go-to presentations for crappies, for bluegills, for pressured fish, for aggressive fish. It gives me the most efficiency, the most productivity to stay on the ice and chase these fish and bring them home. That's the micro spoon, especially new for this year, the Pinhead Pro. If you don't have any Pinhead Pros, I highly recommend you pick some up. You won't be disappointed. Now let's get back to some fishing and join Mike Hayner and Phil Lobby as they track down some basin crappies using Mega Live. We live in a really wonderful time when it comes to technology and ice fishing. You know, when I first started ice fishing many years ago, it was really drill, hunt, peck, look around for fish. It was a lot of work. Now, you know, even 10 years ago, we were doing a lot of um, hole hopping for these basin crappies, and you'd be using your locator and just dropping in the holes looking for them. But as we just learned a little bit ago, as you watch these fish, this, not only is this is a great tool to find fish, but it's a really good tool to learn fish behavior, right? So what we, we were watching earlier was every time Mike drilled a hole, we had two, three schools of fish roaming. Every time he drilled a hole, they would scoot. And you know, that was always frustrating years ago when we were fishing, because you're always wondering where they were. You'd catch them for five, 10 minutes, and then you'd drill around and they'd be seen to disappear like ghosts. So now, um, we, can, we can see that all they're doing is roaming around. And what we de decided to do on this school is we just drilled a bunch of holes because we saw that we were spooking them. And we let them settle down and we monitored their behavior on the screen. And we noticed that they seemed to want to stay in this one general area. So we're just setting up here. Um, we're going to drill a few holes and uh, we're going to kind of wait them out. Um, so we'll see what happens here. There they are right there. Boy, they are just moving and moving. I was just looking that way a minute ago and there was nothing. And now we've got fish 23 feet. They're three to four feet off the bottom. Now I just have to go get my fishing rod and try to catch them. <laughs> 
There we go. Finally. They move and they move and they move and they move. This is actually a pretty good one right here. Look at that. Not so bad. Really nice. Power of technology. There we go. That's what we're looking for, a copy like that. So like Phil was saying earlier, I'm old enough to remember the good old days when you would be fishing in a spot like this and you would have a bobber line and a minnow. Your dad would drive the fish house out. He knew where the spot was. It's like, this is the crappie hole. You didn't know why, but they were there. You'd set the house up, you'd put the bobber line down and you'd catch fish. Fast forward 10, 15 years, flashers came out. All of a sudden now we could see fish, right? Okay, so you still don't know why they're there, but fast forward again, mapping comes out. All of a sudden you're looking on the map, a mapped out lake and you're like, oh wow, now it makes sense why they're there. So you're catching fish, oh, there's another one. You're catching fish with a flasher or a graph and then you've got a graph with a map on it and it's starting to make sense. Now you come to here, the future right now, they're the present I should say, and we've got the forward facing technology so that now you can actually search and find them. So really, really neat technology. Be interesting if you see me down there, Mike. So this is what's fun about this new technology. So Phil's right next to me fishing with a graph, a 2D graph, and you're seeing fish on there, right? Still yep. a couple? Yep, And I've cool. got the Mega Live down here facing in down mode. Let me just see if Phil can, oh yeah, I can see you. You see that one coming up? Yep, I can see Phil's right there. It's coming right up. Oh, he just, oh, he just missed, missed me. So it. there's Phil's jig right there. I'm cool. 10 feet away from Phil. Here's this school of fish below us, and I can judge the mood of Phil's, the fish Phil is fishing for by how he's working it. So that's the cool part of this technology is you can like watch the fish you're fishing for using the lure you're using and see whether they like it or not, how they're reacting to it, how they're reacting to how you jig the jig. Like Phil gets denied two or three more times, he might say, hi, I'm either gonna try a more aggressive approach or maybe I'm gonna put bait on my jig or maybe I'm gonna slow down. Besides being really cool to watch, it's really a teaching tool in a way. It helps you become a better angler because you're watching the mood of the fish like Phil was talking about. See, there's, there's Phil's jig right there. He's not jigging it, but there's a fish moving in on it. Okay, be. now he's gonna start jigging. And now he's getting a little activity. Yep, here he comes. So here he comes. Look how when I wasn't jiggling, he wasn't doing nothing. Yeah, now he's right you. there, now he's right, right on it. Got him, got him, good job. <laughs> nice. There we go. There's two of them down there now. Okay, I got one coming up and boom, just like that. Another decent crappie, huh? Oh, see? You mean I'm off to the left? You got that one coming up on him? Got him! <laughs> That's so awesome. Look at him. <laughs> yep, what is it today, Phil? It's Ash Wednesday. What does that mean to you? It means we get to eat a lot of fish for the next 40 days of lunch, that's what it means. <laughs> there he <Got> is. <laughs> that's crazy, isn't it? That's so awesome. That's oh, crazy. Never gets old. That looks like a it's not bad, yeah. Right, right, right as the sun is hitting the trees. Yeah, it's oh, yeah, that's a beaut. That's a beaut. Nice one, Mike. Another one for the, right, the Catholic fish fry, <laughs> huh? <laughs> yeah, it's a good way to end her. You know, a lot of you might be watching and saying this is cheating or this isn't fair, and it is really advanced technology, but kind of brings me back to. A, an old uh, saying I heard on TV from the old Spider-Man movie, if anybody remembers Spider-Man, with great power comes great responsibility. So we've got this great power at our fingertips, right? So also what comes with it is responsibility. So you as an angler, you can go out and catch tons of these things and really hurt a population or being responsible and just keep what you need for a meal and moving on. So there you go. Well said, Mike. So I think we're done for the night. We got us, a, Phil's got a nice little meal for him and his family for, for Lent and on to another day. That wraps up this episode of Angling Buzz Ice. 
Make sure to head to our website where you can sign up for our newsletter and giveaways. We'll also be releasing new content each week on our social platforms. Thanks for watching and stay safe out on the ice.